you know, a, a technique like this does activate autophagy. And autophagy is so beneficial that we're finding more and more things as it, you know, being something that can prevent cancer. It can boost up our immune system as well as getting rid of just dying sickly cells and preventing from infections. So there's so many benefits with autophagy that more and more people are trying to look at ways to activate it. And certainly alternate day fasting is definitely one of those ways of doing it. Hey, what's up fasters? Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And today we're going to be talking about how alternate day fasting can activate autophagy. Before we get started, if you are new here and not subscribed to our channel and want to learn more about fasting, different fasting tips and tricks and research around fasting and other natural medicine topics, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we do post a video every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, this video we're gonna talk about alternate day fasting and how basically alternate day fasting can activate autophagy. So first off, let's talk about really what are the different fasting techniques that can activate autophagy. So the first and most common one, of course, is water fasting. Water fasting, especially when you're doing prolonged water fasting, when you're doing it for at least 24 plus hours, you can activate autophagy. But this also really depends on what you've been eating beforehand. Because as we do know, autophagy does require that we do deplete a lot of the nutrients in our body. So the biggest one is, of course, glycogen storage, which we do store in our liver and our muscle tissue and also fat. So what we have to realize is what we eat beforehand, if we can make it where our things such as glycogen storage can be depleted beforehand. So doing a lower carb diet, such as kind of like the keto diet or just another healthier form of doing a low carb diet where you can implement that, then you'll be able to jump into autophagy at a faster pace when you start doing water fasting for just 24 plus hours. Now, of course, then there's prolonged fasting. This where you might not need to concern about too much about what you're eating beforehand before the fast. But still, of course, you always want to be eating very healthy during and between, um, well, not during, but also between and uh, before you do your fast. So doing prolonged fast, this is going to be like three plus days of fasting, seven day fast or more, which other people do. The other fasting technique, of course, that can activate autophagy is dry fasting. So dry fasting has been around since, you know, the beginning of human existence with any kind of fasting, but for specifically for religion. Religions have been implementing this type of lifestyle practice of dry fasting where they do not consume any water or any food at the same time. And this can also activate autophagy at a, even a, maybe even a faster pace, or at least you don't have to dry fast as long as you would have to do with water fasting. So that's another technique. The other technique is, of course, intermittent fasting. Now, there is a debate as far as when does autophagy actually activate and this is a little bit of a gray area when it comes to understanding when uh, toffee does activate. Now, I've talked about this a little bit of how we can know how long. And this does, again, go back to really what I was saying beforehand is that we have to understand what we're eating before, how much glycogen storage we have stored beforehand before we even start the fast. So when you're doing just like a 16-8 type of intermittent fasting, I really find it hard to even really activate autophagy that much. It is doable uh, depending on what you're doing around your diet, but uh, honestly, I think that type of intermittent fasting, you're not going to find too much of activation of autophagy. But if you're doing something like the one meal a day type of intermittent fasting, yeah, you can jump into that. Uh, but the biggest one is where I want to talk about is alternate day fasting. Now, alternate day fasting, there's different types of ways of doing it. If you are new to alternate day fasting, it is what it means, like what I'm saying, alternate day fasting. You're basically eating one day and then you're fasting the other day and then you eat the other day. And then and so you're alternating back and forth from a feeding day to a fasting day. So ways that have uh, a lot of ways how it's been done, especially in research studies, is they will do a feeding day and they will usually have no restrictions as far as what to eat. And then the day that you're fasting, you're still consuming about 400 to 500 calories. That's how a lot of these studies have been shown. But honestly, I mean, yeah, they've found a lot of benefits with that, with, you know, reducing cardiovascular risk, 
markers as well as uh, bringing down cholesterol levels, reducing weight, um, tackling insulin resistance. So there's lots of things that can benefit from just doing that where, where I think you can actually even improve upon that is where you're actually completely fasting that day and not adding the 400 or 500 calories on the fasting days. So that where you so basically what you'll be doing is you would fast a full 24 hours and then eat in an eight or 12 hour span uh, during your feeding day. But where the research is starting to start to pick up and showing even more benefit is what they call is the 36 12. So 36 12 is you're going to be fasting for 36 hours and then the next 12 hours is an eating window and then you go back to eat fasting for 36 hours and back and forth just like that. This is where they found a lot more benefits and as well as activating autophagy with this process. So I'd like to kind of dive into some research uh, that I've kind of found around this. In fact, even just very recent research about alternate day fasting. It was in the Today Show they, uh, back in August. The end of August, this research study kind of came out. And so it's been kind of uh, in the media more often, which is great that they're starting to find other different types of intermittent fasting techniques that can benefit our body versus just doing the 16-8, but doing something like extensive, like 36 hours of fasting, whereas the medical industry find that to be really something that's um, harmful for the body. But they're finding that it isn't. Uh, a lot of these studies are finding that doing going fasting that long for 36 hours and then eating for 12 hours is really not harmful for the body. So I just kind of wanted to dive into the research and let me just kind of go over a little bit what I found here. First that, uh, you know, the largest uh, clinical trial related to the connection between alternate day fasting and autophagy was published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism on the 27th of August of 2019. The study used an alternate day fasting program where participants were introduced to 36-hour fasting windows followed by a 12-hour unlimited eating window. The researchers behind the study confirmed that this process did not yield any serious side effects in the participants. So that's really huge uh, to find a big study like this, especially something published really recent, is doing something this extensive. They didn't find that there was any concerns, any health concerns. Whereas in the past, people thought fasting past 24 hours was dangerous. But the more and more I do it with my patients, I'm finding that there really isn't any health big concerns. Now, of course, when people who are have uh, are on lots of different medications, who are diabetic or on high blood pressure medications, you do have to be somewhat still careful when you're doing a longer fast than 24 hours. You still need to, you know, work with your physician with that. But the, with this study, it's you know, hopefully, people in the medical industry will start realizing this is something that we can start implementing more in treatment options. Now, who knows? I mean, with, you know, with uh, the pharmaceuticals and the food industry, I feel like there's definitely lots of research swayed to go against this because they don't make money with fasting, right? When, <laughs> when you're using fasting, it doesn't cost any money, right? You don't have to, and a lot of people are able to get off their medications and you're not consuming food, so it's not good for any of the food industry or the pharmaceutical. So of course, there's going to be some biased studies out there against fasting. But looking at something like this, really, I think I w- hopes, hope that a lot of you know my own colleagues and different uh, medical doctors will start utilizing this with their own patients. So going further into the study, you know, the researchers also did found that autophagy was effectively induced among the participants during the 36 hour fasting window that they had to undergo. So that's, you know, really there's always that gray area of when does autophagy being activated. I've talked about this in some of my other videos too of different markers that uh, scientists will use to find out what does actually consider activating autophagy. And you can check that out on my playlist. Um, You know, I'm not going to talk about that today. But the thing that's really, you know, nice to see is that, you know, a, a technique like this does activate autophagy. And autophagy is so beneficial that we're finding more and more things as it, you know, being something that can prevent cancer, it can boost up our immune system, as well as getting rid of just dying sickly cells and preventing from infections. So there's so many benefits with autophagy that more and more people are trying to look at ways to activate it 
And certainly alternate day fasting is definitely one of those ways of doing it. The other interesting thing they found in this study is that in addition to the detection of autophagy among the participants, researchers also noted other health benefits. They found that a reduction in the SICAM levels was noted that they were reduced, which is uh, what this is, is basically it's a marker in the body uh, that is associated with inflammation, as well as a several age-related diseases. They also found that cholesterol levels were also lowered and there was reduction in belly fat among the participants. So not only do we activate autophagy doing alternate day fasting, but also you can start reducing inflammation by just doing alternate day fasting. People feel like they have to do prolonged fasting in order to get the benefit of reducing inflammation. I've said, I always said this before is that you can do it in smaller doses. So something like the 3612 is certainly a way in the long run that you can actually reduce inflammation, but also reduce belly fat, visceral fat, which is the most dangerous type of fat that our body builds up for a lot of different health concerns that we build as we get older. So the final thing I want to talk about is, okay, what type of fasting technique is the best for activating autophagy? So I always say that really what's best for you, what do you consider is the best technique for you because everybody is different of what they can handle. I always say, you know, start with intermittent fasting. Yeah, start with the 16-8, even though you're not really going to activate autophagy very much through that, but start that way until you kind of build up to maybe uh, doing the one meal a day. And if you find that style of one meal a day is best for you, great. But uh, doing something like alternate day fasting, that's what I'm starting to do right now. I'm kind of finding that a little better because I've been doing the one meal a day for a very long time and really my way to just other things that I find I'm not feeling the same benefits with doing one meal a day and it, I, it's always good to switch things up. Uh, so if you've been doing the one meal a day for a long time, maybe try doing the alternate fasting because this can kind of keep your body where I feel like the metabolism when you're actually can, having a day where you eat more than just one meal, uh, it keeps your body a little bit more active as far as your metabolism rate. And then, of course, you know, fasting for 36 hours, so even longer than just 24 hours can really start tackling and also activating into more levels of autophagy because really there's been other studies that when you push up to, you know, up to 48 hours or the more hours to closer to 48 hours can get to that uh, 400% increased levels of autophagy. So, and then, of course, you know, with dry fasting, that does, you know, jumps in there. If you find that dry fasting is more beneficial to you or if wider water fasting is or doing three day fast here and there, you know, whatever works best for you, I think is great. But I really think you should consider alternate day fasting as a way to implementing on a daily basis versus, you know, doing a prolonged fast here and there a couple times out of the year. It's best to get more out of it when you can implement it as a daily lifestyle. But I'm curious what you guys think, you know, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. That way we can all kind of, you know, gather some, you know, information from the community of people's opinions on what they think about alternate day fasting or different fasting techniques to activate autophagy. And then if you are also, you know, have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button over here. And then, of course, check out our playlist over here as far as autophagy goes and this other video over here on autophagy that you can check out. And in one of our next videos, we'll talk about how alternate day fasting can help with weight loss. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.